Do you guys want to know how fucked up the current job market for tech is right now? Um, I'm going to just go over all the layoff news and the current job postings and, and just show you guys firsthand right now. This is June 15, 20, 2023, how difficult it is. Um, I remember when I was learning web development back in 2017, Part of what motivated me to learn and study hard is all the job opportunities out there. Um, whenever I feel, would feel down about, you know, struggling in terms of building projects and going through courses and building a portfolio that I thought was good enough to apply for my first job, part of what was a big motivator for me to keep going and pu keep pushing was... Um, viewing the job postings on the internet and seeing all the jobs I could potentially get. Um, that was really motivating. Whenever I would feel depressed or down or doubt myself, I would just go on Indeed or uh, Glassdoor or any job posting site and literally see all the jobs I could apply for and just envision myself driving to an office and uh, doing what I love, which is coding and stuff, at least back then. Uh, that's what what actually kept me going because every day I would see new job postings, junior front end developer, HTML, CSS, um, JavaScript developer, uh, UX developer, all that stuff. I'm going to show you what I see as of June 15, 2023 on Indeed. I'm putting my location in Los Angeles, California. And let me show you. Um, this is a, a keyword that I would search back when I was learning how to program junior web developer you guys ready do you see that oh wow <laughs> you can't, oh, sorry my fucking screen okay so i would search junior web developer when i was starting to learn how to program to motivate myself uh to keep going because of all the job postings i literally searched junior web developer um, I put the location for Los Angeles. Look here. Do you see that? It says five. In the city of Los Angeles. Let, let me show you something. There's four million people that live in Los Angeles. Do you, The current junior web developer openings for... LA is five. How are we not in a recession right now? And and this is an instructor. And do you realize three thousand a month is almost minimum wage? Like, hold on. Let's go thousand. Okay, wait, wait, there's four weeks, so forty divided by four weeks, that's I can't do math. Um, four weeks. Four weeks <laughs> divided by. Okay, wait, there's. I'm dumb. I'm so dumb. Sorry. F no wonder I'm not getting hired. There's 40 hours in a week. There's four weeks. 160 hours a week, or, or a month. 103,000 divided by. 160 that's about $19 an hour or let's just say let's be generous say, say 20 hours $20 an hour that's some of some some fast food places pay 20 an hour so this is like look at 23 an hour this is ridiculous. And then this one, okay, this is a decent salary, but who knows if this is a real job posting. Like, this is insane. Oh, look at this wage. Do you realize that this is fast food wages right now, right? Like, okay, out of five job postings, there's one here. There's one two there's two that are listing a reasonable wage the other two this one 
is an instructor. It's basically like a teacher's assistant. This is minimum wage. This one, this one right here is also a bullshit job. So you have one, you have two, you have two actual jobs. And here's the thing, if you actually just put web developer, okay, you might be thinking, this is, uh, there's 700 jobs, right? But remember, there's a population of 4 million people. And I know everyone's not a developer, but let's just say there's 200,000 people that are developers, that are front-end developers. All right, 200,000. Not even, let's just say there's 50,000. Do you realize there's only 700 positions open right now? <laughs> so, um... If we go through the list, uh, a lot of these positions um, aren't just like uh, your typical front end or JavaScript roles. A lot of it's uh, like weird shit, like Python developers. Uh, Okay, this is, these are fine, but like, like, there's another entry, and this is basically minimum wage, too. Um, yeah. And here, here's another thing to note. You see how it says 80 to 90? They're asking for five plus years. At five plus, you're a senior developer, and you should be getting paid almost 150k or more, maybe 100k at least, or 120 at five plus years. So this is should be like a a two. This could be a two year developer. So not like these wages aren't justified. Um, but yeah, you, you get my point. Oh, and also, um, because the job market was so tough and because my last role was technically a webmaster. So when I searched webmaster, uh, when I applied in 2020 um, or 2021, there are a lot of webmaster roles. I'm going to show you how many webmaster roles there are if I search, search right now. Do you see that number? It's three. <laughs> There's three webmaster roles. And I think this one is one we, we just saw. So there's one that's actually a webmaster. There's a SEO specialist and there's a junior web developer position. So there's three, like the tech recession it's insane. It, like a, a lot of people that just got in tech or, or were being self-taught, they're gonna have to pivot to something else. Um, I've read a lot of reasons why there's a tech recession. One of the reasons is because quote there was a mass hiring during COVID, and there's a correction process. Part of that might be true. My other conspiracy <laughs> theory is that that I read that I kind of believe is that. Um, this is like a protest uh, for from corporations who are against remote work. They want people back in the offices because they're paying for all these buildings um, and they just want control. Um, I think that's a big part of it, too. The other part is that um, AI is, is just came overnight and um, it takes one person to do a five person job now. So. Instead of paying five de developers, you could pay one developer and one intern of like a part time minimum wage. So you could pay one one developer a good wage and have him be happy, him, her, whatever, be happy. Um, and then one intern to <laughs> you could pay one intern part time at a minimum wage to say you're helping out students. So you, you could say you could show that your company is you know, being helpful and it's, it's like being progressive because you guys have interns. But really, before you hired that intern, you laid off five people, which actually happened at my last job. 
they did a mass layoff and a few like one or two months later they uh, listed two intern positions which is odd because it's like you could pay the interns less and look good and have a job posting on your or in your company and, and it seems like you're doing well for yourself um, but in reality you just laid off like five full-time workers and replace them with two interns. It's so stupid. Um, so that's my theory. Um, but yeah, that's the job market. This is insane. Um, literally three job posts. This is just, oh my God. All right, but you get the point. It's crazy. This is, I know this is just Indeed, um, but Indeed is a huge, like it's, it's one of the primary job boards out there. You know, it's not like some random site I just went on. It's Indeed. Uh, but anyways, um, I want to show you guys a video that talks about um, San Francisco and that they're closing down a lot of their shopping malls or one big shopping mall. Uh, one of their famous theaters is closing down and, and like aside from tech, like the the big Silicon Valley, like big cities are, are just crumbling too. So when I read these headlines that say there's no recession and, you know, even though amid these mass layoffs, uh, the economy is still persisting and is strong, I I'm seeing things differently. Like, okay, the economy's good, but everyone's depressed and they can't afford their bills. So, okay, we're not in a recession, but everyone's broke and depressed. So, so what do you want to call it? Like, it's, it's so stupid. Um, but anyways, I'm going to play you this clip. Um, it's two minutes long, but... Let's just watch it. Oh my fucking god, my internet. What the fuck? Dude. This doesn't ha- Oh, okay, okay, okay. Crown for retail shopping. Tonight, the Westfield San Francisco- once a crown jewel for retail shopping, tonight the Westfield San Francisco Center is pulling the plug on its famed downtown mall. The stunning decision to walk away comes as the city struggles with homelessness, an open-air drug market, and the perception of crime. In a statement, Westfield says, given the challenging operating conditions in downtown San Francisco, which have led to declines in sales, occupancy, and foot traffic, we have made the difficult decision to transfer management. I don't come to San Francisco anymore, let's put it that way. It's scary. As other cities like Chicago and Portland deal with major retail closures, the mall's demise in San Francisco comes just weeks after Nordstrom announced its exit from the city center. With nearly half of the stores set to soon be vacant, the future of those still operating is unclear as the nearby Gap shutters and Old Navy plans to soon close. Westfield says sales in San Francisco have dropped 35 percent since 2019, while their mall in neighboring San Jose saw sales increase 66 percent. City officials say remote work and a decline in tourism have changed the dynamic here. And while statistics show robberies have increased so far this year, other serious crimes are flat or down. Though recent crime numbers here are mixed, the image of San Francisco has changed, especially as the city deals with the lack of police officers. Right now, San Francisco is dealing with a level of drug addiction and drug-driven um, retail theft and problems with street conditions, um, and we've got to get our arms around that. Tonight, the retail decline of a major American city as San Francisco pays the price for its struggle. All right, so... The gist of the video is um, a lot of retail stores are closing down um, just because there's not a lot of people going into them. Uh, and also crime is a big problem too because it's like, I feel like everything's a trickle effect. Like like when COVID happened, everything shut down and then there was all the protests and then that just snowballed into more drama. And then people started working from home. And then that became an issue with the companies because companies didn't really like it, but they didn't have a choice. So now that everything's kind of back to normal, there's just like everything's fucking having a butterfly effect. Uh, the cops don't want to do their job because they're angry at the protesting. And then 
the crime goes up, but then people want to work from home and the companies are mad and then they're the companies are laying people off people don't spend money anymore then when people want to go out they get fucking punched in the face by a homeless dude or by a gangster and then the gangsters don't go to jail so then they keep doing it and then crime goes up spending goes down like all this shit's <laughs> all this shit's happening so i probably didn't explain it that well and it's probably not accurate but i'm sure there's some accuracy and truth to it uh, essentially, the thing is, is that a, the economy is going to shit. That's that's the main thing. There's a recession. People are getting laid off. Homelessness is increasing. Buildings are getting closed down. Uh, the companies are still playing for the buildings, and they're getting mad because no one's in the buildings. So they're trying to like bring back people in the office, and they're like, you know what? Fuck this. We're gonna lay all, all you motherfuckers off. <laughs> so, then, so then, when people are, <laughs> are getting laid off. They're not going to spend any money. So there's going to be empty buildings. There's going to be broke motherfuckers. Homeless is going to go up. Crime's going to go up. And then while all of this is happening, fucking AI is getting better. AI is like, who knows what the fuck chat GPT, the, the secret private version that's not released to the public could do. You know, that's just crazy. And then there's fucking aliens. I didn't even get to the aliens. So I don't even know at this point. I don't know. But, um... There's some more videos I want to show. So that was the mall closing down, the Westfield Mall, right? I've never, I'm not familiar with San Francisco, so I don't, I don't know. But it's a, it's a fucking mall closing down. Okay, um, what else? There was another one. There was another video. Oh, here we go. On this quiet Wednesday in San Francisco's Westfield Mall, movie lover Mark Pisarczyk nearly dropped everything to rush to Century 9 theaters one last time. I'm here to try to use the remaining balance on my... Oh yeah, the, the other thing I wanted to talk about was, I think in the mall is this like really famous theater, theater that's closing down. There you go. Here we go. Let's watch it. Century San Francisco, the movie theater at the downtown Westfield Mall, will have its final showings tomorrow during the matinee. Yeah, and while it might look like another black eye for the city, as ABC 7 News reporter J.R. Stone heard from experts, they say it might be a sign of a much larger issue. Better get your popcorn, because the, the Westfield San Francisco. I feel really disappointed. We've been coming here forever, and this is one of our favorite places to be. Chaz Maria, from closing and Westfield no longer running this San Francisco mall between Market and Mission, Cinemark will stop showing movies after Thursday. When I was at this movie theater, I noticed that it's not, they don't upkeep it. Like, it's, it was really dirty when I went in there. And I went on a Saturday night, and I was just like, wow, like it's empty. It's like ghost town. Some within this line made references to safety concerns outside the mall, but UCLA professor Gabriel Rossman says this is a bigger issue. So people are saying that the mall was dirty as fuck. It was depressing when you went in because it was dirty and empty. They didn't upkeep the, the building. So imagine going to see like a big movie like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 or I don't know, Spider-Man um, Across the Universe. Like one of these big movies you've been waiting for, right? You walk in, half the screen's ripped, the projector's streaming at 480p. It's like, it's like watching a video where you're, you have shitty Wi-Fi, and then you see the squares pixelated. Imagine paying, like, $15. You go watch a big, high-budget movie from Marvel, and that shit's, like, it looks like bootleg at a movie theater. There's fucking gum everywhere. And then you finish the movie, right? You finish the fucking movie. You walk outside the theater, and guess what? You get punched in the face by a homeless dude. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's basically what happened. That's basically the situation in San Francisco. But, anyways... That's not even the reason why it closed down. The reason why it closed down is because there's a recession. It's, I, I don't actually know. Let's listen. There is a general trend for movie theaters um, that's nationwide. And I would say that has less to do with, you know, how many homeless people are pooping on the street outside the movie theater than it. Like, is this real? Did he just say that? I haven't seen this video. He literally just said the, the amount of homeless people pooping on the streets is having an effect. Is that what you said? Let's, let's listen. Done with, you know, how many homeless people are pooping on the street. I would say that has less to do with, you know, how many homeless people are pooping on the street. 
Oh, he sa- he says that the closing of the theater has less to do with that, although it is happening. That's- outside the movie theater than it does with just I don't need to go to the movies because if I just wait a month and a half, I can watch this on Disney+. Plus. Rossman says the number of screens in the country is down 5% since pre-COVID. So, I don't think that's true. I think a lot of people still like the movie theaters. That's probably an unpopular opinion. But when I went to go see Spider-Man and Guardians, those theaters were packed. When I went to go watch smile the horror movie many months ago that theater was packed every single movie i went to watch within the last year the audience was was the the seats were pretty filled up so people want to go to the, the theaters the issue is what what theater experience are you providing if you're providing a good one that's clean refurnished the food's good ticket prices aren't too expensive that thing's gonna get a lot of ticket sales because the theaters I go to they're on Hollywood not Hollywood but they're like they're they're really good quality theaters and the and I make sure that I'm surrounded in a in a in a good environment where it's safe and the tickets reasonably reasonably priced and whenever I go watch a movie it's it's not a ghost town um, So maybe it does have to do with the shit on the street and the upkeep of the movie theater. But let's keep watching. Also saying streaming services will likely not be as strong going forward as Hollywood tries to rebound. The surprising thing is that so few have closed because box office is down. Business conditions. Movies. All right, whatever. You get the point. The point is there's a big fucking trickle effect. Um, across a lot of different industries Um, but tech is being affected the most but as you can see everything's being affected there's a writer's strike movie theaters are closing down entire malls are closing down Um, there's an amazon strike that's kind of tech though but yeah there's basically aside from the headlines saying that there's not a recession aside from that everything else is shit because whether you want to call it the worst non-recession ever or, or a strong economy, but a shitty quality of life, whatever you want to call it, shit's not good right now. And um, I'm a statistic because I'm going through this shit. But uh, let's look at the layoffs. Oh, and then there's, you know, today Oracle, the big tech company is cutting off hundreds of jobs too. But um, this is a popular app that tracks um, recent layoffs. Uh, If it could fucking load, okay. So let's see. So here's the thing. Um, In terms of layoffs, I ignore all the non-US because I live in the United States and everything that happens outside of the United States, I don't give a shit about. But anyways, um, within the last 20 let's just say 24 hours there was one two three three companies already that laid off like let's say 80 times two equals that plus 130 almost 300 people and this is on record um this app does a really good job on tracking bigger companies but this doesn't account for all the smaller ones so this is 300 on this app but you know, there's a lot of smaller companies that lay off like two people, four people, five people. That shit adds up. But, um, you know, on record, on, on this app, 300 people since the moment I woke up yesterday. Wait, I can't even talk. From <laughs> from yesterday till now, there were 300 people. Um, but the last big one was Grubhub. And Grubhub laid off... Uh, where the fuck is it? Where those Grubhub? Oh, right here. 400 people. And that was one of the big ones. But what's crazy is... Um, let's just see... Oh, fucking shit. Let's just see the whole month, alright? 
So from June 1 all the way up until here, all these people got laid off. Look at all these companies. There's 50 companies since this month. We're only halfway through the month, and there are 50 company layoffs. All right, all right I mean, if you ignore this, how do I filter? Um, uh, how do I do US? I filter out. Has none of non US. Non US. Okay. All right. That's better. So, since uh, June 1, there's been 39. 39 jobs or companies that lead people off. All in the United States. So, yeah. Um, it's pretty crazy. Here is the big number i think this is in total like the world 200k um but yeah man um shit is pretty depressing out there uh yeah that that's just my reaction of what's going on I, I, I seriously don't know how this is not a recession. Like, yeah, whatever. All right, that's my video. We're, at, we're coming up at 30 minutes, so I'm going to cut this shit off.